Good morning. It's a bit of a windy one today. It was howling all day yesterday and it's, we didn't think it was that windy down at home. But when we've come up to the allotment, it is quite windy. So you'll have to excuse us for all the noise going on, the wind noise. There's actually builders over the field clanking. And then there's a, uh, there's a man count, cutting the, the grass over there in the field. So it might be a little bit noisy, this one. Um, but we can't help it. <laughs> If you watched the last video you would have seen me weeding out my salad border or just trying to thin it out a bit because the salad was starting to bold. So I took quite a lot of the lettuce out. Anyway, since then I've had a bit of a rethink. Actually, if I don't get all that lettuce out and replant, we're not going to have any salad after this. So my rethink is I'm coming up now, I'm going to pull all that lettuce out and I'm going to reseed it. I'll show you, give you a little glimpse of what I'm going to put in. I'm not just going to put lettuce in this time because it really gets a bit boring just having uh, lettuce leaves all the time. So I've got together a nice little bunch of different things here which I'll go through after I get this lettuce out and show you what we've got. I haven't got much room, just three little rows really so I think I'll just put a little bit of each down and the theory is if they all grow when I come to pick a salad I'll have all these different um, leaves with different flavours and that should be quite nice. I haven't quite managed to get the hang of successional planting. It takes quite a lot of discipline a successional plant I find. you got to be on it all the time thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next. And although I have improved this year, that salad is something I'm going to have to work on. But hopefully I haven't left it too late. July it's at the end of July so if I can get that in now all the seeds that I've got all see you can still sow in July so I'm hoping if I can get that in we'll still get some more salad after this so I'm gonna go down now pull out all these uh, old lettuces more treats for the hens So this is back with the salad bed again. I've just literally got two rows of lettuce that I'm taking out here. And then on the next bed over there, there's one big row and there's some spinach there. I'll have a look at that. I may, I may not take that out. <laughs>
unfortunately I'm going to have to take this gorgeous um, bunch of nasturtiums out as well. It's taken up a huge part of the border. A bit heartbreaking, but never mind. I was going to say you can't eat them, but actually you can. I might pinch them for some salad leaves. Look at that, what a shame. Actually, Kenny's just had a really good idea. If you watched my last video, you saw me picking rocket and I went on, um, not on the video, to make pesto with the rocket and some kale I had. Um, he's just suggested why don't I make a nasturtium leaf pesto. So I'm actually going to try that. There's a whole load there. I'm just going to pick all the leaves off and then um, go home and make a batch of pesto. I think I've got more kale, nasturtium and kale pesto. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Very exciting. There you go, I've got quite a bit of area now to plant with new salad, I'm quite pleased. I've just weeded it out and um, popped some compost on the top to give the new seed a chance to take hold. Um, I'm not a great fan of seeding in place, I usually like to seed in the greenhouse, it just gives you a bit more control. But I don't really feel like I've got the time in the season to be able to do that this time. I just wanted to show you this, which I'm pretty pleased with. It's the first time I've tried parsnips. Um, they're just going to be next to this salad bed here. You can see them poking through. They're coming on really well. I don't know whether they'll be as fabulous when they're pulled. Um, I don't know whether I've got to wait until the first frost to make them sweeten up. If anybody knows whether I do or not, I'd appreciate it if you'd comment on that to let me know. Will they be sweeter if I leave them until after the first frost? I've got a good handful of uh, seed packets here. Uh, I don't know whether I'll have room for all of them, but we'll see. I've got some more spinach to go in. This is the red spinach, which I've, I wasn't sure if it would grow in this climate, but actually it's really, uh, it does well here. It, it's a pretty kind of thing to put in your salad. I've got some more lettuce, I'm going to do maybe half a row of that. It's called All Sorts and it was basically three different varieties, I don't know what. A green one, a, a dark red one and a kind of in-betweeny one. It was nice and they grew really easily. This one's sorrel. I've, also, I've already got some sorrel that I've seeded and put in and they're still just small plants. Uh, too small to pick just yet but I did try one leaf. Whoa, they're really strong and lemony make a good addition to a salad you maybe wouldn't want too many in i'm not sure that's just some more spinach whoops that wind uh this one is golden purslane i've also got a little bit of this um already and i'll show you uh, what it looks like but again that's too small at the minute i haven't tried it before i don't know what it's like and um, but i think it was steve's seaside allotment i saw um, him growing that this so I thought I'd give it a try I just ordered them on Amazon I think and I've got some cress so I think that's probably enough for the little patch I've got and we'll see how we'll get on and hopefully that'll be salad for us right up until the autumn if, the, if these germinate and do okay this is the sorrel seeds very small as you see I'm just going to scatter them I'm not going to do rows or anything and I can thin them out if they germinate I'm just going to keep the sorrel all together. This is already sorrel, so I'll just put them all in the same little spot. I sow quite thickly because half of them might not germinate, half of them the slugs might get, and uh, I can always thin them out. 
Just keep them to this half of the border. These are the golden purslane. Again, they're tiny, they're like puppy seeds. I'm going to put the red spinach and then the green spinach in this half of this little patch here. So you see that's called Orach Red Plume. I don't know whether it's a, a true spinach or not. Again, I'm just scattering them. I'm going to just give a light sprinkle of um, compost over the top once I've done to cover them over and then a light watering. It's supposed to be going to rain quite a bit tomorrow so that'll give them a good chance. Then the next day, if you can believe the Met Office, it's going to be a boiling hot day. So we'll see what happens, that will be nice. I'm to help get the seeds to germinate. I'm just going to put that in quite thick. These are the spinach, proper green spinach seeds. They're lovely and big, nice and easy to handle. I'll probably just push them down a little bit into the soil. I just thought I'd mention uh, this orach or red spinach. Um, normally with salad leaves, certainly with lettuce and spinach, you take off the biggest leaves and let it just keep, the smaller leaves keep growing. But actually I think from doing the same thing with this, I think it's been the wrong thing to do. I think what I should be doing is nipping out the top, the growing stem. And if you see here, can you see that? There are two other oh, little shoots coming off with leaves there. I think if I start nipping out the tops, it's going to give me a much bushier and fuller plant, where as it is, I've been taking off these just bigger leaves and these bottom leaves. The whole thing's just getting taller and taller and more and more spindly. So I'm going to start doing that, nipping out the top. I know that that's what you do with basil plants. Um, you nip, you're supposed to nip out the top rather than going around the edges and you get a good bushy plant. I think it's the same with this. Like that. So I take that away and then that leaves those two to grow out and bush out. That one, yeah, I take that out. And I take that out. And that's a little experiment. There's little tiny leaves at each point where I've nipped it out just below and hopefully that will make the plant bush out. As I've said I'm not that keen on um, sowing seeds direct. I prefer to do it in the greenhouse because I feel like I've got more control when the tiny little seedlings come up um, you know they're really delicious for slugs and what have you. So I'm going to show you I've got a special recipe for um, slug bait to deter the slugs it really works it's great um, and I discovered it I think it was a, on Pinterest I found this little recipe I had tried beer traps um, where you just put beer in a little container and put it flush to the soil and of course the slugs do like that and they all dive in but to be honest I wasn't very keen on buying beer and feeding it to the slugs I actually ended up using you know, quite a bit of beer. And even though I bought, I think it was called Galahad from Aldi, the cheapest beer you could ever buy. Uh, nonetheless, I still didn't want to spend money on beer for, for nothing. So this is a, um, not exactly free because you've still got to buy the components of it, but it's a lot cheaper. 
this slug bean is made up of yeast, dried yeast, if I can show you. Uh, which you can get it again now. Actually, during lockdown, it was pretty hard to get, almost impossible. Uh, anyway, it's back on the shelves now. Just ordinary sugar and flour, any flour that you like. And so you want some containers, depending on how many you're gonna put out. Now I've got, I've put four little beds of salad out. So I think I'll just do the four. I'll maybe do five since I've got five containers. Actually, that one's nasty, I'll not bother. So all you're gonna do is, you can make up a, a bigger bottle of it. Uh, that probably might be easier. Oh, this one's full of little bugs. These have been sitting outside, that's why they're like this. Anyway, so you just want a little nubbin of um, yeast like that, just a quarter teaspoon or, you know, it doesn't. it's not an exact measure. And it's actually the yeast that the slugs go for, that's why they like the beer. They can smell the yeast, I think, in the old dive in. That'll do. And then you want probably the same again of sugar. The sugar is there. If any bread makers out there, you'll know this already. The sugar is there to feed the yeast. That keeps the yeast active and keeps it going. And then you want just some flour, probably double the amount that you put of the others, so maybe a teaspoon, like that. And then you just top these up with water, give them a good old stir, um, and then put them into the ground, flush with the ground, and Bob's your uncle when you come back. They'll be full of slugs, I can guarantee it. Um, you, I'm going to probably fill them up, I might half fill them now and then I'll completely fill them when I've got them in the ground because otherwise they start to spill everywhere. Just half fill that with water. Just stir it up to dissolve it a bit. It does all sink to the bottom but um, that's fine. And then I'm going to dig a little hole. I'm a bit premature with this really, I should probably have waited for my seeds to germinate but um, I'll just stick this one in anyway to show you. So there you go, I'm just digging a little indentation where this little Tupperware thing can go. I'll just slot it in. Make little ramps so the little slugs can climb in. And then I'm going to top it up with water. And I'll give it another stir. I left my spoon back at the shed though. I'll give it another stir and that's it. Now the only issue that we have got is we do have a couple of naughty resident crows. I think they live in the tree behind. And um, I think it's them, but every time I put these in, when I come back the next day, they've been flung over the garden somehow. Um, and I, it's just a mischievous kind of thing that a, that a crow would do. So I'm going to have to put some kind of little something over it to try and stop those crows from getting them. They're so naughty. Right, I've just got a bamboo stick. I don't know whether this will work. With a plant pot on the top. I'm going to just try and put it down really low. Maybe try and hide that a bit. Did the slug get in there? Well, yeah. Maybe. That should do it. This, the crows won't see that and uh, slugs can get underneath as long as the wind doesn't blow it off. So there you go. Um, a new take on uh, getting rid of your slugs with yeast, with a yeast mixture. I'll show you the results when, when next time I come and it'll be full of slugs, I guarantee you.
What do you think about nasturtium pesto? I think it'd be nice, or nasty, maybe a bit bitter. Anyway, I'm going to give it a try. I, I like the idea of foraged foods. And although this did grow in my garden, so it's not strictly foraged, is it? Kind of is. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, trying to reinvigorate my salad borders. As you can see, we're on a new channel. Um, if you'd like to help us grow our channel, if you're enjoying the videos that we're putting out, it really helps if you like our videos or comment on our videos and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, I'll let you know how the nasturtium pesto works out. Maybe in the winter I'll even show you something I cook with it when there's nothing going on in the garden. And I'll show you all the slugs in the slug trap next time we'll come up. So hope we have a good day. See you in the next one. Bye.